Hello students, welcome to EPG Parsala. I am Dr. Sanjukta Subuddhi, working in the Department of Environment and Industrial Biotechnology, the Energy and Resources Institute, New Delhi. Today we will learn about the model biofuel, gaseous biofuel. Under that, I will briefly introduce about the biohydrogen and biomethane under the paper environmental biotechnology. The objectives of this module will be introduction to biofuel and significance of the biofuel forms. We will also learn about different forms of biofuel. Under that, we will then eventually discuss on gaseous forms of biofuel, biohydrogen and the another form of gaseous fuel is the biomethane. Before moving to understand details about the biofuel production, I will briefly introduce what is the significance of energy forms, why there is a need to look for the biofuel production technologies. As we know that energy is a vital input for socio-economic development of a nation. With rising population, global energy demand is expected to increase by around 40% in next two decades. That is how the concern for alternative energy production processes came into scenario because currently more than 80% of energy demand is being met by producing energy from the finite fossil fuel sources that is the petroleum hydrocarbons. These processes are finite. However, global population is rising and subsequently energy demand is rising. Yet the fossil fuel sources are the only form of energy which is available for us. Hence, there is an imperative need to look for alternative energy production processes which do not rely on petroleum hydrocarbons as the main source of energy. Among different alternative energy forms, biofuel production process got significance as one of the most sustainable and environmental friendly energy production process because these processes can be operated at ambient temperature and pressure in mild conditions and these processes can make use of the fish stock which do not come from the fossil fuel based sources that is the waste many form of fish stocks like lignocellulose biomass organic waste algal biomass aquatic plant biomass industry waste they can be used as a good source of fish stock to produce biofuel by using certain set of unique microbes for production of different form of biofuel. Another significant aspect of this biofuel is that these are environmental friendly because production of this fuel are not associated with generation of greenhouse gases. As we can see here, global carbon dioxide emission for 2011, which was around 31.6 gigaton, which was already above the limit of energy related emissions as set to 21.7 gigaton in 2035 as per the Copenhagen record. That means the limit which was set for 2035, which was already existed in 2011. So there is a urgent concern to look for the alternate energy production processes. Here we will learn about different forms or sources of the energy. There are two different sources of energy, the conventional energy sources and the unconventional energy sources. Conventional energy sources are normally those energy sources which are limited forms and the finite forms such as the fossil fuel forms like coal, natural gas, oil and firewood. Because these sources are termed as conventional energy sources because these are finite sources. However, in compared to the energy sources which are produced from the renewable forms such as solar power, hydroelectric power, wind power, tidal power, 
ocean power including the geothermal power these forms of energy sources are categorized under unconventional sources of energy because these are the renewable forms these forms can be produced in a sustainable manner from by using the alternate forms of sources non conventional sources of energy forms were first recognized in our country india in the year 1970 among different forms of non conventional energy sources biomass energy is one of the significant source of non conventional energy again the biomass energy is categorized into different forms based on the form of energy along with the feedstock used for production of this energy one is solid biomass another is biofuel and the another form is biogas as the term indicates here biofuel biofuel is nothing but the fuel or the energy which is produced through the use of biological forms or through the from the biomass sources there are different forms of biofuels biofuels are renewable because these fuels or energy can be produced from the different sustainable forms or sources which are not finite which are not limited hence biofuels got increased public and scientific attention globally these are because of the nature of their environmental social as well as the economic advantages because these fuels are not depending on the use of finite fossil fuel sources the another advantage of these biofuels are production of these fuels does not lead to generation of the greenhouse gas like we get these problems through by the use of the fossil fuel forms hence biofuels are the cleaner forms of fuel and they are environmental friendly as these are not associated with the greenhouse gas emissions and not posing a threat to the climate change considering this significant importance use of biofuels got increased dramatically in the recent years again with the use of different forms of feedstocks feedstocks are nothing but the substrates or the energy sources which are used for the production of the fuel these biofuel are categorized into different generations based on the type of feedstock or substrate which are used as the source of energy for production of fuel biofuels are segregated or classified into first and advanced next generation biofuels first generation biofuels normally are those forms of fuel which are produced from the feedstocks that are food competitive or feed competitive such as sugars however in the in case of advanced biofuel forms the feedstock or substrate used is non food or feed competitive mostly these are the biomass sugars organic waste and again in case of advanced next generation biofuel based on the different form of feedstocks these are again sub classified into second generation and third generation biofuel in second generation biofuel are those biofuels which are produced from the feedstocks that are not competitive with the food crops the agricultural based food crops and the third generation biofuels are the those forms of energy which like biodiesel produced from the algae biomass first generation biofuels such as ethanol and biodiesel got significant importance as a advantageous forms of biofuel in the recent past however eventually it was observed that there are some technical and commercial drawbacks in these forms of biofuel because these biofuels are mainly based on the use of feedstocks that are feed competitive the concern for food versus fuel eventually prompted the scientists 
over the time to explore for advanced next generation biofuels so that the competition for the feedstock for use of food or fuel will be solved. Considering the concern for the food security in the recent past, the importance is being given to the production of biofuel from the next generation feedstock, which is otherwise known as the advanced next generation biofuel. Advanced next generation biofuels include bioethanol, biobutanol, mixed alcohol, biodiesel. These are the liquid forms of biofuel produced from the second and third generation feedstock, hence advanced liquid biofuels. If gaseous form of biofuel produced from these next generation feedstocks, they are known as advanced biohydrogen, advanced biomethane production from the next generation feedstocks such as lignocellulosic materials, agriculture and forest residues, industrial waste or dedicated crops. Advanced biofuels have the potential to produce in a large amount as this can, this can minimize the competition for the agricultural land. Considering all these facts, significant aspects, the future research areas need to be prioritized in the domain of sustainable advanced next generation biofuel production. There are different forms of biofuels like liquid forms and gaseous forms. Among the liquid forms of biofuels are those like bioethanol, biobutanol, biodiesel. Among the gaseous forms of biofuel are the biohydrogen and biomethane. Considering the significant aspects of biofuel production, globally scientists started exploring on the production of biofuel from different feedstocks. And here we will understand the status of different biofuel research achieved in global scale. Like for bioethanol, production from the first generation feedstock is already been achieved in the commercial scale. Coming to the biodiesel, the liquid form, biodiesel from the algae is still at the stage of infancy in lab scale. However, algal biomass generation has been moved to the pilot scale. Coming to the biodiesel production from the higher plants like Jatropha, already been in early commercial stage and biodiesel production by trans esterification process is already been achieved in the commercial scale. In terms of biomethane production, it, extensive explorations are being done globally and biomethane production mainly through the anaerobic digestion process is already been commercialized. However, biomethane production from coal and oil still in the phase of infancy. Compared to this biosynthetic gas production, leaves are already obtained in the demonstration scale. Similarly, for hydrogen, extensive explosions are already been done by scientists in a global scale. However, still the photofermentative or photosynthetic hydrogen production processes which are being carried out by algae are still in the stage of infancy, keeping in sync with the challenges those are associated for production of hydrogen by algae through this process. However, hydrogen production from the process that is the dark and photofermentation processes are already being intensively explored and these processes are already scaled up in the pilot scale. However, hydrogen production through reforming of the biogas is already been achieved the lead in the demonstration scale. The term biohydrogen refers to the production of hydrogen through biological roots from various feedstocks by using the living organisms, mainly the microbes. Actually, different forms of microbes, they have got this potential to produce hydrogen through the life processes. The biomethane term refers to the production of methane through biological processes by using various feedstocks. Hydrogen is being seen as a promising source of energy carrier. This is mainly because the energy content of hydrogen is high, which is around 122 kilojoule per gram. 
and this is 2.75 fold higher than the energy content of hydrocarbon fuels that is the fuels are the energy what we recover from the fossil based sources however hydrogen is a energy carrier and this energy carrier needs to be converted to different energy forms prior to its use the advantage of this hydrogen is that it can be easily used in the fuel cells for the generation of the electricity as i indicated before because this is a energy carrier and this needs to be converted to different energy forms so fuel cell is a mediator if we pass hydrogen through fuel cell it can lead to the generation of electricity so electricity can serve as a good source of energy from hydrogen so that it will be considered as a very good cleaner or greener source of energy further hydrogen also got advantage as a good automotive fuel and more important is over here that this is carbon dioxide neutral when hydrogen burns it releases water which is clean that indicates production of hydrogen is not associated with generation of the greenhouse gases so this is environmental friendly these are the main aspects which raise this energy carrier hydrogen as one of the most promising energy carrier the demand for hydrogen is very high globally and further this hydrogen demand is going is predicted to increase by at least 3.5% annually through 2018 to 290 billion cubic meters as i indicated earlier about the importance of hydrogen and the demand for hydrogen currently the required demand of hydrogen is being fulfilled by producing this hydrogen through the use of conventional fossil fuel sources the concern over here is that though hydrogen is the cleaner form of energy carrier but this the current processes which we are using for production of this energy carrier are the fish stocks which are coming from the finite fossil fuel sources so this process is not an completely environmental friendly processes because we are using here the fish stock from the fossil fuel sources only 4% of hydrogen currently we are able to produce from the non conventional sources that is water through the use of electrolysis process hence there is a dire need now to produce hydrogen from processes which should not depend on the use of conventional fossil fuel sources then only the complete the overall hydrogen production process can be sustainable can be renewable and in order to produce hydrogen in a sustainable manner it is very essential for us to explore intensively to produce hydrogen from renewable sources such as organic waste lignocellulosic biomass here we will learn about the different processes of hydrogen through physical chemical processes and comparison of the hydrogen production processes through physical chemical route with the biological hydrogen production processes the difference between these two processes are that the physical chemical processes make use of the fossil based sources such as the fish stock different processes which are used to produce hydrogen from this fish stock are partial oxidation or gasification of heavier hydrocarbons or coal another process is steam reforming of light hydrocarbons the other process is thermal cracking of natural gas these three processes though different from each other all these three processes they rely on the fossil based fish stock hence they are not the cleaner form of hydrogen production processes another concern is that the energy requirement for these three processes is very high these processes are energy intensive and apart from that when the fish stock is burned or utilized during this process it releases lots of greenhouse gas hence these processes are not environmental friendly and the concern over here 
is to look for hydrogen production processes which will not depend on the fossil fuel sources. Hence, the biological hydrogen production processes got global attention. Why? Because these processes can be carried out at ambient condition and not energy intensive. Another aspect of these processes are that these processes do not make use of fossil based sources. Hence, the feedstock, the non fossil based feedstock which are used for production of hydrogen through these processes do not lead to the production of greenhouse gases. Hence, they are environmental friendly. There are different forms of microbes. They have got the potential to produce hydrogen through different life processes, life pathways. And based on the different life pathways, these processes are categorized into four different parts. One is the dark fermentation process. Another is the biophotolysis process. Number three is the photofermentation process and the number four is the integration of the dark fermentation process with the photofermentation process. This process is the hybrid between the dark fermentation process and the photofermentation process. Details of the microbes which are used or for the production of hydrogen through these processes we will eventually learn. As I have indicated earlier, more than 95% of hydrogen is produced from these hydrocarbons from these three processes that is partial oxidation, steam deforming and thermal cracking. Only 4% of hydrogen are being produced from the non-conventional sources that is water through the electrolysis. Hence, this raises a great concern globally to extensively explore for the sustainable hydrogen production processes. Hence, biological hydrogen production processes got the importance. As we learned previously, different biological processes for hydrogen production. These processes are categorized mainly based on the microbes. They have got the potential to produce hydrogen and the type of pathway that is being carried out those particular microbes for production of hydrogen. One is dark fermentation process. As the name indicates, this fermentation process does not require light as a source of energy. Hence, the term is dark fermentation process. Few of the microbes like Clostridium and the Enterobacter, they have got this light pathway for dark fermentation process to produce hydrogen. And the another process is the photofermentation process. As the name indicates here, this fermentation process occurs in the presence of light as a source of energy. However, in case of dark fermentation process, sugar or the carbohydrate sugars, the organic sources, they serve as the source of energy for the micro. In case of photosynthetic process, the microalgal and the cyanobacterial strains, some of the strains, they have got this potential to produce hydrogen through photosynthesis and in this process light again serves as a source of energy. The difference between photosynthetic process and the photofermentation process over here is that in case of photosynthetic process water serves as the feedstock for production of hydrogen the clean water. In case of photofermentation process, the short chain organic acids like the acetic acid, butyric acid, they are the source of the feedstock for this hydrogen production. The microbes which have got potential to produce hydrogen through photofermentation process are completely different from the photosynthetic process. The life pathways involved for hydrogen production is also different in these two processes. Coming to the process for the hybrid process that is the integration of dark fermentation with the photofermentation process is the combined process of dark fermentation with photofermentation. The significance of this process is that the spent effluent or the waste discharge which comes which is left out after the production of hydrogen from dark fermentation process serves as a good source of substrate or feedstock further production of hydrogen through the photofermentation process. Hence, after completion of this dark fermentation process, the waste effluent 
can be very well used to produce further hydrogen through the photofermentation process. In the module Microbial Production of Hydrogen, we will study or learn in detail about the life pathways, the life processes which are used by these microbes for production of hydrogen and the name or the specific microbes which are which have got the potential to produce hydrogen. As I have already indicated before, the different forms of biofuels, that is the first and second generation biofuels, here again the biohydrogen production processes are categorized into first generation and the second generation process based on the use of feedstocks, that is the feed competitive and the non-feed competitive. Based on the use of different feedstocks, biohydrogen production process is again classified as first generation and second generation. In case of first generation biohydrogen production process, mainly the carbohydrate based sugars serve as the feedstock, whereas in case of the second generation process, the non feed competitive feedstocks, mainly lignocellulose biomass, serve as a main feedstock for production of the hydrogen. As we learn, the second generation biohydrogen production, which makes use of lignocellulose biomass as feedstock, we will learn here what is the significance for use of lignocellulose biomass as feedstock for clean biohydrogen energy production. Major composition of the biomass, lignocellulose biomass, is the cellulose and hemicellulose. These are the complex forms of the carbohydrates and one third composition of this biomass forms they contain lignin. So there is a huge potential to tap energy from these 60 to 70 percent of cellulose and hemicellulose components of this lignocellulose biomass. The other significant form of this feedstock is that these biomasses are non-feed competitive. Hence, there is not major concern for use of this feedstock for energy production as this is not raising any concern for food versus fuel. The advantage for using this lignocellulose biomass is that in India, if we see a large amount of lignocellulose biomass is being generated which is around more than 220 billion tons. If we can tap energy from these biomass sources, there is a huge potential to produce energy equivalent to 60 to 80 billion tons of crude oil. So we can see over here, there is a huge potential to use lignocellulosic biomass for clean energy production that is hydrogen over here. So what are the concerns for use of this feedstock? The concerns are cellulose and hemicellulose as indicated earlier they are the complex forms of carbohydrates and many of the microbes they got the enzymes or the biocatalysts that can make use of simple forms mainly the C6 sugars to produce hydrogen. Hence, before using this feedstock, this, there is a diet need to convert these complex forms of carbohydrates into the simpler forms. Lignocellulose biomass is mainly composed of cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin in the proportion of 30 to 50 percent, 20 to 35 percent, around 10 to 15 percent. The major challenge over here is the highest efficiency for conversion of sugars, these complex sugars into the simpler sugars that is cellulose to glucose and hemicellulose to xylose. If the conversion efficiency can be pretty good enough, then the hydrogen yield efficiency from this lignocellulose biomass will be significant. So that is the main challenge. In another module under this paper, you have learned in detail about the conversion of lignocellulose biomass like AC treatment and alkaline treatment into the simpler forms. So hydrogen production from these sugars is known as the second generation hydrogen production. Details of processes about first generation and second generation hydrogen production 
we will learn in the module microbial biohydrogen production. Biogas is the cheapest non-conventional energy source and it can be produced from various organic waste. This is the significant aspect of this product process. Biogas mainly refers to the production of gaseous form of fuel by biological background of the organic matter and this production process is the anaerobic process that is this occurs in the absence of oxygen. Biogas is mainly composed of methane which is in the range of 55 to 60 percent and carbon dioxide in the range of 35 to 40 percent. Apart from that some other gases like nitrogen and hydrogen sulfide present in a very small amount around 6 to 5 percent of nitrogen and hydrogen sulfide in the range of 0.2 to 0.4 percent. First discovery of biogas was traced by Van Helmont in the 17th century when he noticed the flickering of light below the surface of the swamps. Eventually in 1776, Volta observed scientifically for the production of this flammable biogas, biogas is flammable from decaying plant material and he also observed that biogas was flammable only in certain condition. That means he was the first to discover the production of biogas in certain condition that refers to the absence of oxygen. Eventually in 1884 a student from Pasteur France had anaerobically produced biogas by suspending the cattle manure in a water solution at 35 degrees Celsius in ambient condition. That is how the production of biogas from the organic waste got the global attention and scientists globally explored to develop this process which eventually commercialized. Biogas as I have explained contains major amount of methane along with some other gaseous forms. So this methane needs to be purified from the other gaseous composition prior to use of this methane as a cleanup form of energy for application of various application in various sectors such as for illuminate as an illuminant for lighting for cooking for heating for running water pumps and after slight modification it can be used in internal combustion engines. Methane purification from biogas is mainly done through various processes like absorption, adsorption, cryogenic fractionation and the membrane separation. It is very important to use methane in various end use applications because otherwise this methane will be released into the atmosphere which will raise a concern for the climate as this is one of the greenhouse gas. By generating biogas from waste organic substances and using this as a form of energy after purification has many significant aspects because this process takes care of degradation of waste matter in a sustainable manner along with that production of energy from the waste. As we learned from the previous slide that different waste from animal house, animal starter house and the cattle dogs, the waste organic sources from the industries, they can serve, those fish stock can serve as a good source of energy for production of biogas. The yield efficiency of biogas from different fish stocks varies depending on the organic fraction of that particular fish stock. This slide shows the schematic diagram of the biogas cycle. The waste from the industries, from the slaughterhouse, animal house, from the cattle farm can be processed efficiently for production of biogas by passing through it from the anaerobic digestion process which is mainly occurred in the absence of oxygen 
and biogas after production is purified to get the pure methane which is channelized for the production of energy in the form of like you can see electricity and the renewable fuel the after recovery of the gaseous biofuel the spent effluent from this biogas plant serve as a the solid fraction serve as a good source of biofertilizer as it is still rich in the organic sources and the water comes out is the treated water so the overall cycle represents a biogas cycle starting from the waste leading to the production of clean energy production of the biofertilizer release of the treated water so students we will summarize the details of biofuel gaseous and liquid biofuel what we learned from this module rise in demand for renewable energy especially triggered a pressing need for exploration of alternate energy forms from the non fossil sources which are not finite in this regard biofuel production from renewable non fossil based sources looks more promising for clean energy generation few of the biofuel production processes are scaled up like we discussed successfully to pre commercialization and commercialization scale such as bioethanol and biodiesel which are the liquid forms of biofuel however still there are many challenges associated with other biofuel production processes and these challenges need to be addressed to scale up these production processes to a commercial scale considering the issue of food security advanced biofuel production processing processes gained more importance recently because these processes do not rely on feed food based feed fish stocks and currently are being extensively explored for scaling up this biofuel production from this non feed competitive fish stock to a commercial scale thank you very much